A Battle for the Mind The human mind is a battlefield. It can be likened to as the central processing unit of a human's entire being. The mind is that human faculty where decisions are being made. Scripturally, the mind of man is used termed as the soul, and sometimes it may be regarded as the heart. And when I say man, I don't mean in terms of a male. I mean man in terms of mankind, male and female. Whichever term is used to represent the mind, one significant thing about it is that it dictates the physical action of every person. Whatever anyone does physically, he has concluded it in his or her mind. Therefore, our physical activity is a reflection of what lurks up in our minds or hearts, as the case may be. Our minds are our greatest assets. There is nothing a man conceives in his mind that he cannot find expression for. In Genesis chapter 11, the Bible gives us an account of how men in the then world conceived in the minds to build a tower that reaches up to heaven. God knows that our minds are powerful. He created them, after all. He knew that men would find the reality of the conception in their minds if he did not interrupt them. Genesis 11 verse 6 says, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. God knows the power of our human minds, that whatever we conceive in our minds we can accomplish it. Have you ever thought about all the great inventions and discoveries that are in the world today. The human mind created the skyscrapers we see and the great architecture all across the world. The human mind created the intricacy of the internet. In instant, we can search up whatever we want. The human mind created the telephone. You can be in one part of the globe and I can be in the other, but in an instant we can be talking to one another, even video calling one another. The human mind created the car, planes, rocket ships, and all the wonders of technology we are able to experience. God created the heavens and the earths. He created the sun and moon seraphim and cherubim, but there is nothing as uniquely made as the human mind. The Bible even goes as far as saying, As for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. The devil also knows the power of the human mind, hence he is constantly striving to be enthroned in our minds. If he gets our minds, he has got control over our lives. Our minds are like the stirring of a vehicle. Once the devil gets hold of it, he can drive us wherever he wishes. Our minds are usually inclined to spiritual control. Either your mind is governed by the devil, or you yield it to the Holy Spirit. You can't be neutral about this. No one ever runs his or her own mind on their own. Our minds often yield to spiritual control. However, yielding our minds to whosoever pleases us remains our personal choice. The devil is always after our hearts and he will try every means possible to rule our minds. In Proverbs 4 verse 23, King Solomon said, 
Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Solomon, in his wisdom, knew that the whole life of a man is a reflection of his heart. However, the devil lured Solomon into adultery. He used lust to win the mind of Solomon. As a result of Solomon's promiscuity, he became a victim of his own words when he failed to guard his heart. He was led into idol worship. The devil used the lust against him. 1 Kings 11 verse 4 For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. Finally, Solomon ended his life in a shrine. Our minds must be guarded at all times, otherwise we permit evil to creep into it and ruin our lives. The words and actions of a man are the greatest measures the condition of his heart. Jesus said in Matthew 12 verse 34 that it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. The devil is good at arranging some circumstances which will make him gain access to our minds. Sometimes the circumstances may be pleasurable, while at other times it could be challenging. The devil used pleasure to win the heart of Solomon, but he surrounded Job with evil circumstances, all with the intention of having access to their minds. Job was a man that prospered, but he lost all he had in a single day with his ten children. Imagine that, losing your wealth is one thing, losing your health is one thing, and losing ten children is one thing. All of these things are horrendous situations, but for all that to happen in one day, in one day, it was the devil who orchestrated the losses Job went through, so that his mind will be drifted from God. Unlike Solomon, Job guarded his heart, even when the devil sponsored his wife to make him curse God. Job's mind stayed on God. Finally, the devil failed over Job's life. Job 2 verse 10 But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips? You see, your car didn't break down because the devil wants your car. You didn't lose your job because the devil needs a job. Neither did you lose anything valuable in your life because the devil has need of them. He only arranged those circumstances so that he can gain access to your mind. There are believers who believe that the devil cannot arrange circumstances in people's life. He can, and the book of Job proves it to us. The age-old truth is still true till this very hour. There is always something you cannot see, controlling what you can see. Nothing just happens. The devil is just trying to frustrate and stress you and get you to point and blame God. He wants to take away your ability to serve the Lord. Romans 7 25 tells us that it is with the mind we serve him, and the devil will try to cause life events to go after your mind. The devil knows the significance of your mind and he is just after it. 
Most times we cannot discern the circumstance created by the devil to win our hearts until we finally overcome him by taking our stand for the Lord. Job never knew what the devil was trying to do, but he just guarded his mind against satanic intrusion, and so we must do. Romans 12 verse 2 shows us how we must handle our minds. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The devil may come to you with an evil thought or idea, but praise God, we have a system of cleansing our minds. We are to renew our minds, our hearts, are renewable by the blood of Jesus and God's Word. Reject every suggestion the devil gives to you and take your stand firmly in the Lord by guarding your mind.